Hi, welcome to the show. Today we have a special treat. Well, we always have a special treat, don't we? From the McMinnville Area Chamber of Commerce, we're going to tell you about their program called Leadership Mac. And we have a recent graduate of that program, and he's here to share his experience. Help me welcome Ray Reimer. Ray, thanks for being here. Uh, Ray's Leather Repair is your small business, and that brought you into the chamber, and from there you were invited into this, this class. Well, Ray, thanks for being here to share with us your experience. Let's back up a little bit. How did you come to McMinnville? I met an amazing lady. Ah. Uh-huh. We all suckers for amazing <laughs> ladies, right? Um, now I met a, an amazing uh, lady, and uh, she was from McMinnville, and I'd come through, done some work in Mc, the McMinnville area, and the rest is history. Now you said there was something stood out to you about McMinnville, which not everybody would notice, but you have a special background that made you fall in love with one aspect. Tell us about that. <laughs> I uh, I was doing work in for. Mac Water and Light. I was a commercial diver for a short season uh, in my career, and uh, I, I did work doing inspections and cleaning. And uh, after traveling the country, I realized that I fell in love with the water system. Believe it or not, it seems crazy, <laughs> but there's some places I would like I wouldn't shower. Like this place is gross. I wouldn't, you know. I'm like we're you know putting bottled water to brush our teeth. Some of the systems I had seen personally. Um, really wasn't very clean and so when we looked through Mac water and light system and we were doing just their inspections just looking at going in the tanks and just examining things as divers I went man someday I could live in this place this is a great <laughs> water system I feel totally comfortable you know in that and it says a lot for Mac water and light so you put on scuba gear and you went into storage tanks? We went into storage tanks, and yeah. You, you, with inspect, with lights and you? Well, it was a commercial gear, so you're fully uh-huh. encapsulated, you know, you, you're the contaminant. They're sporting oh, yeah. you down with 200 part per million, you know, solutions so you don't contaminate the water. And then you go in, you make the full inspection of the tank and uh, multiple tanks. And uh, we did full on reports, did video. Um, took sediment off the bottom if there was any sediment and uh, ran that through the labs and and uh, did all, all on video and then we submitted it to the city and um, that was that but yeah we were here for like three four days and I was like this system's amazing and you had the thought while you're underwater in our storage tanks I could live here. <laughs> I'm serious. Some places I'll be like, I don't even want to stay in a hotel. Let's just stay out in the camper. We'll, we'll use the system that we have that we know is, is good. But yeah. So you met then someone, you were in Corvallis. I was in Corvallis. And you met someone from McMinnville and you thought about that water system. <laughs> it's kind of a funny story, but when right before, right before uh, my wife, Christy and I, right before we met, uh-huh. um, I was working in McMinnville. Yeah. And then shortly after that, I met her. Uh-huh. And then to find out she was from McMinnville and I'm like, <laughs> we can live there. I can raise a family there. I, I just, uh, the water is amazing. Oh, that's great. Wow, what a testimony. That, <laughs> that's beautiful. So you, you've moved here and you've opened your business. Yeah. And tell us a little bit about your business. It's not just all one storefront right here. What? How does it work? We, I've been in the same line of business for the last, it will be 20 years in January. Um, But we service from Vancouver, Washington, all the way to Redding, California, Mm -hmm. and it's a leather restoration business. Um, So we work on leather, vinyl, mainly with the furniture manufacturers. That's kind of a lot of what we do. Do all the warranty, in warranty and out of warranty work, and we work for many retailers that sell uh, for those manufacturers. Now, when I graduated from college, my dad gave me a leather briefcase to handle brief bag, I think it's called, and I wore it out. And now I brought it, it's in the car, we can't forget, I want you to take a look at it, see if you can save it. Is that the kind of thing? For sure. Okay. Yes, Good. Love, love to help you out. I'd love to pass that on to the next generation. Okay. It's a beautiful piece. All right, so you're here, you're in business, and you tell us about how you got hooked up with the, with the chamber. Um, through my wife once again. Uh-huh. Went to a couple events, went to a couple greeters. How is she involved? Um, she is the manager at US Bank. Okay. So, um, you know, she's hosted a lot of different events. She's been involved in the community for years. Uh-huh. Um, and shortly I met a lot of new people. I met Nathan Nottingham at the time. 
um, we had moved back right after he had come back on board. So it was, uh, it was really neat to kind of have that relationship. And then, you know, of course, everyone, you know, I could just list names of people like right away, just shook their hand. And I just felt like I was already a part of the community. And we just got, we just got here and felt very accepted. And I was like, I, I want to be a part. So what can I do? And there is a, there is a magic in greeters every Friday morning. Those business people come together and the community that's there, the common, Esprit de corps, of we're doing business. We want a successful, thriving, sustainable community. We want a strong local economy. That bringing those people together and working together like that is, it's a special feeling. So you felt that <clears throat> and you got a little nudge from Nathan. Tell us about that. <laughs> he just was like, all right, Ray, you can join chamber. And I uh -huh. go, all right, yeah, I'm, I'm really busy, Nathan. And he goes like, come on, just let's, let's meet, let's do coffee. And then he just, uh -huh. he just kept on. So you can join yet, you can join yet, you can join yet. He'd seen me at a couple events and, and I was like, you know what? Yeah, I'm gonna do it. Let's, you know, sign me up. So I went, and filled out the paperwork, and became a part, and have tried to be in a, involved as much as I can while I'm around mm -hmm. as possible. So that then translated into oh, leadership Mac. It wasn't you and the family that did it first. So tell us about Christy was a, uh, a member. Correct. So she went through it last year. Uh huh or the year previous before I did. Yeah. And uh, each time she would come home, she'd tell me all the stories of what they did and how, I mean, we would be laughing as she told me the stories of, you know, them going to the first day um, at the team working and, uh, you know, she's hugging on to complete strangers and they're trying to balance and, you know, they're, everybody's falling and it, they, they got extremely bonded right from the very beginning. Yeah. And it just started every month. It just kind of would, amp up a little more and a little bit more. She would find more about the community and we would sit at dinner that night and just talk for hours about her experience and what what you know she got to be a part of. And I was like so jealous. And I'm like, why why didn't I do this? You know? And I tried to put my application in, but um, it was full. So yeah. I got on for the next year. Now let's let's kind of describe this program. You give a good description of what's purpose. It brings community together. Okay. And how is that done? And kind of give us an overview of the program of called Leadership Mac. Hmm. Basically, it's about 30, 35 people mm -hmm. that are leaders in town, but rather business owners or people that are leaders in business um, that help run other businesses in town. Uh, we all come together with that common goal to, uh, you know, to grow our community to learn more about our environment, learn more about the services, learn more about the nonprofits and the businesses in town and industry in town. And uh, just to open our, our eyes and then get some hands-on activities to, to um, participate. Participate, in, yeah, yeah. So she went to the 1415 class yes. of Leadership Mac. And so you had to wait a year listening to her because it's once a month for nine months, nine months. And so you listened to her for nine months and then you got your application in and you were in the 15, 16 class. Correct. And like I introduced you, you're a recent graduate just a couple few months ago. Mm -hmm. And what you've got a plaque to prove it. I do. <laughs> I do. I got a plaque to prove it. They at graduation, they, they give those and, uh, they give those out and you put it on your wall and it's something to be proud of. Something to be proud of. You know, right here, you brought in this, this um, ad for, um, or it's a program. It's our graduation. Uh, graduation program. And they list in the program all the graduates since 1988. 1988. And uh, there's just, there's hundreds of them. And I was looking through and I saw uh, Cassie Sollers and uh, Rick Olson both graduated back in the 90s and um, so there's just you could go through that and find a lot of people that you knew that have done this program mm -hmm. and it's um, okay well I'm gonna let you talk about it not me <laughs> uh, so you started out what was your you talked about what Christy had, was experiencing coming home telling you about this this training or what the the ropes course or what is that tell us about that first meeting so the first meeting we go out to uh, the telecom uh, challenge course and uh, they set up obstacles and 
and uh, they break you up into teams and you basically, whether you're balancing on wires or you're, you're balancing on blocks with multiple people, so you have to make sure your weight is properly balanced. Um, and then you find yourself hugging complete strangers and it's normally, you know, at that time of year, it's sometimes it's a little muggy out. So we're all kind of like, you know, uncomfortable, you know, but it breaks that, uh, that barrier and you feel, you walk away from that feeling, huh, I may have hugged you. I may not even know your name, but, uh, uh-huh. We're a know, team. We're a team. We're a team now. We are a team. So they generate this teamwork atmosphere. So when you go out together, you're given challenges during the class. Is that right? Yeah. Well, well let's sure. talk about that. First class after the uh, challenge course uh, was in September. And then in October, it was called Human Services. So what happened there? All, basically, all the nonprofits in town came and they shared their heart and their purpose and what they're trying to accomplish in our community. Um, and from my experiences was I, I, my mind was open to what these nonprofits actually do and their needs and how can we be a part. And we probably heard from, I don't know, 15, 20, mm-hmm. maybe even more nonprofits and they shared their pro shared what they were about, what their goals were. And then as a class, we got to vote on, um, helping a couple of them. And so each nonprofit knew that we were interviewing them essentially of maybe a project that they wanted to accomplish this next year during these next nine months. And we picked a few of those. So they made a presentation to you as a class on here's a project you could take on if you choose to do so. So the class voted and chose two of those projects. Three or four, uh, okay. one, one fairly good sized project okay. um, and a couple smaller projects. Um, that, that would last the entire nine month period that we could continually work on. And uh, yeah, we, we made a vote as a class and uh, it really kind of brought us all together to you know, people stand up like, I'll head this, I'll head this. And, and uh, we put small committees together and made it happen. So people just got inspired by being there and rose to action. And tell us about some of those projects that you chose. Uh, so the one I'm pretty proud of is we, the St. Barnabas Soup Kitchen, their dishwasher was breaking down on a regular basis and you know they feed oh i don't know fifty thousand meals or something like that in a year and so it was one of those things where who wants a when you're washing that many dishes who wants a dishwasher to break down where you have to wash them all by hand and i was like that seemed like a no-brainer we need to fix that and uh they had a proposal and they said it would be about ten thousand dollars and we thought well in this amazing community that should be pretty easy so there's 35 people in this class and they voted to take on raising ten thousand dollars correct and that was going to be easy that we thought okay what happened uh we put a campaign together we put a crowdfunding campaign together we put a a small committee of us got together kind of came up with some little taglines like we were kind of joking um like we called it the um cp uh c our, our clean plate club um, and so we uh, put a campaign together with some crowdfunding, and to our amazement, we s- totally surpassed our goal. For those of us that aren't familiar with crowdfunding, you just tell us a little bit about what that looked like. Oh, well, we did it on generosity.com. Okay. And we kind of put a, we made a short video uh-huh. explaining our purpose and what we wanted to accomplish. And then through social media, everybody could share that link on Facebook or Twitter, um, Instagram, and uh, on their websites. And it just got sent out to the masses and people could click and donate uh, via social media. And you raised how much again? We actually raised over $30,000. We tripled our $10,000 goal, which is huge. And you raised thirty thousand dollars. Correct. And this came from the community all over the country. It was all over the place. So we had cash donations, and oh. um, people could come in and donate right at First Federal there. And uh, you know, it just the the word spread, and to our amazement, the community just stepped up. They just stepped up, and people gave generously, and we made it happen. So the dishwasher got replaced, but and you had twenty thousand left over, which you did what with? They totally redid their kitchen, completely remodeled their kitchen. That's how that happened. I was aware that 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 that, that, that happened. New yeah. stainless steel, yeah. A new walk-in. Wasn't there a freezer effect? Yeah, there was like you, know, you you just have to go look at it. Okay. And they have befores and afters to show you exactly what happened. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. That is pretty awesome. Uh, another project. Remember what? Uh, we else? did a community garden. Um, okay. with um, MB Advancements. 
Um, they, it was a phase one. There was a couple phases that they put together. So we didn't finish the project, but we went through, cleared the land, you know, kind of laid down gravel. Um, and uh, once again, another committee came together and uh, they organized with the class and said, this is what we're doing. Lots of, uh, lots of things were donated and uh, they were able to finish that um, actually shortly after graduation uh, because of the weather. We had to hold off on that. So, um, but yeah, that was another project. We did uh, um, Aiden's Toy Drive mm -hmm. um, was another one that we did. And um, yeah. So the nonprofits came, inspired you, you took action, a, a big success. So this team that was created that first day with the, uh, the course, the trust course, you really then had another success and not just balancing on, a, on an obstacle, but really helping out the community. Correct. So you've had two big wins right in a row. Right. I, I mean, opportunities to, to start on those. Okay, so the next month, November, basic services. What's that mean? Um, sewer, water, garbage, all those services that we don't necessarily don't think of that much. You know, if the sink works, you know, we got to go to Mac Water and Backwater Light and tour through their facility, went through the treatment plant and toured through the facility. Yeah, but they give you a spotlight moment because you, <laughs> I kinda, <laughs> you were the water expert. I kind of kept my mouth shut. Oh. I really didn't say much. You know, I, I don't I don't really say. Yeah, no, nobody, you're time. very privileged to know that information. Most people don't know that information about me and McMinnville. <laughs> well, we won't um, <laughs> tell anyone, Ray. <laughs> it's only on TV now, so <laughs> hey. <laughs> All right, so you toured the water, sewer. What would you learn there? just to appreciate all the hard work mm -hmm. that goes in to make our water amazing. You know, we heard about the reservoirs up on the hill, that it's all privately owned, how it's all funded, um, you know, how to, how, what they, what the steps they took to make Mac water and like what it is today. Um, the vision that's gone in to it over the years um, is really inspiring. People just really said, hey, we're gonna need water for a long time. And this was a hundred years ago. And what it's come to is just something to really be thankful for. For sure. So, and also, I know that there's events that happen. There's high water events. And we think, yeah, the creeks are high, but we don't know that there's people scrambling to keep the water pure, to keep our wastewater treatment functioning in these, in these events. I'd imagine you learned something about that. Yeah, we learned quite a bit about just... Um, everybody's role and how many people it takes uh -huh. to make sure everything's running smoothly and yeah dedication yeah all right basic services electricity did you yeah yeah we got some of the lowest rates they kind of made some comparisons uh -huh. on uh, we got some of the lowest rates in uh in the northwest yeah okay um, that's another benefit why to live why to live in mac basic services all right and the next in then december education so we toured through the colleges and uh, went through Linfield, went through Chemeketai. Um, we went through uh, Mac High, kind of went through some of their, their programs. We even went out to the program they have over at the Aviation Museum mm -hmm. with Mac. ESA. Uh, with the ESA program, <clears throat> got to learn about that. Um, and we, like everything was hands-on. So we got to walk through the facilities and ask questions, you know, and uh, have some group discussions. And then we would have um, leaders, whether, you know, superintendent or different individuals come and, and share um, their vision and their purpose. Uh, again, inspiring. Inspiring. Very to see inspiring. what we have in the in our in this town right here. Right. For community for education. All right. Then in January, public safety. So we took tours through the firehouse for the fire department, the police department. Uh, we went through um, the uh, the jail. Mm -hmm. Got to walk through that. We got yeah. a tour through the jail. Uh, went through um, a juvenile hall. Um, basically, once again, all hands-on, walked through the premises, asked a lot of questions, had group speakers, directors came and talked to us, chief of police, um, sheriff, um, and lots of questions, answers, and got to walk through the entire, you know, all the, the fire trucks and their sleeping quarters, and, and uh, it was pretty, pretty phenomenal. I took a tour of the jail. It's very sobering. Yeah. Um, one thing that hit me, I wanted to curious if it hit you, was the cells are not very big. Mm -mm. It's not a place that you want to be. Mm -hmm. I, I would think if more people toured the jail, they would 
have maybe some more deterrence to, <laughs> to <laughs> do it, something that would get them there. Right, Cause right. Because it's, it's not a picnic. Right. It's, it's, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad you had that experience too. To see, though, the dedication and the compassion that the officers have there for the people that are there. For sure. I, I really felt that too when I was there. All right. Uh, government. You went to Salem. Yes. We went through um, the Capitol, and they were coming rather in or out of session. We got to talk to um, a couple of representatives. Um, it was... And there was a topic on the table. Yeah, at that time, the whole, um, you know, minimum wage topic was... Now, that and the, doing lots of talk about the marijuana, you know, mm -hmm. some of that stuff was all kind of, you know, settling, or and then the minimum wage topic was pretty hot at that time. So you got to watch that unfold. Yeah, we kind of got to see kind of a little bit behind the scenes and realize the importance of us. We have a voice, and a lot of us just go through our day-to-day, -day and we don't call up and, you know, talk to us, you know, a representative, a senator, or... Um, you know, someone that has that authority to make a, a decision or go in person. We heard the value of actually going, knocking on the door and saying, I have a huge concern. We, you know, yeah. they get flooded with emails, flooded with phone calls, but you just go knock on the door and say, this is my concern. This is what it is. They'll listen. Did you actually go to our representative in our senator's office? We did. We walked through. Okay. Yeah, we walked so through. So to see where Representative Widener, Senator Boquist, they actually sit, work, Right. And those offices are the ones you go visit when you, if you get an appointment. That's correct. And Bulquist actually came out and talked to us uh -huh. as a group. And we had a, had a time to talk out there on the steps of the Capitol. And um, it was, it was Our great. Our senator came out and talked to leader, the leadership class. Yeah. That was great. We, yeah. And then we, we did, we actually talked to the, the governor too. We got to go in her office and we all circled up and, uh -huh. and it was, uh, it was a great experience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great experience. That is great. You get treated with a lot of respect in leadership class. Yeah. It sounds like. Yeah. You people open their doors and treat you treat you well yeah. because they know that you're there to learn how to bring community together and be leaders. Right. All right. All right. Well, we've gone through this step by step. Business and industry, travel and tourism. What what are some standout things there? Well, um, I thoroughly love. We got to go through Cascade Steel. Oh my gosh! And Not everybody gets to do that. Yeah, we got to put on hard hats and put on jackets and just kind of walk through. And it was eye-opening. Uh, just respect for the industry yeah. and uh, uh, just amazing uh, what what goes all into that. Uh, we went through Freeland Wade, also. We just back up to the steel yeah, mill. Yeah. Did they turn on the electric furnace? when oh, you were there. We got to watch them. They were pouring while we were there. So we were watching. They just, you just actually feel it melt. Oh yeah, it was hot. You could, it was And, and they turn the electric, I heard that the vibration is so, it just shakes your, your whole chest cavity when the electricity is going through the metal. Yeah. I want to go too. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. <laughs> pretty amazing. Okay. And then you said uh, Freeland Wade? Went through Freeland Wade as well. Um, Megat? Went through Megat, yes. Yeah, Jeremy Lodge there, an amazing manager. He came out and talked to you? He did. He was my personal tour guide on the, on through it all and that was pretty amazing yeah. got to hear him and his 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 story and and his passion and he's and grown that that uh, plant a lot they've really made some advancements in the last few years and i would have never thought that some of the things are actually coming out of mcmanville uh -huh. um just some of the things they make there um whether it's things on airplanes or on even he has the you know that secret section where you know you're not supposed to talk or disclose and you know of whoever he's sending these items to, a lot of military stuff uh -huh. and uh, that's made right here in our backyard. So you got to feel for the important industry that we have in the area. And that was, that was eye opening night. Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right. Uh, business and tourism. We've have a, we have a room tax now that's made possible. Uh, what's the name of the organization? Visit McMinnville.com. Yes. Okay. And you learned about how they're bringing people. Right. Well, we also kind of, we walk through third street and, you know, got to look at what makes McMinnville so amazing and how we are the best downtown west of the Mississippi. And, uh, you know, just a lot of, um, unique, you know, places to eat, places to visit wine country, right, right downtown on third. And so that was, that has been a big part of, um, you know, travel and tourism. Leadership culture and history now. What went on there? This is your last class in May. Right. We, we kind of heard about, you know, the historical prospects of our community and how, where we came from and, um, 
toured some of the old buildings uh, downtown and and uh, just kind of walk through. Uh, we went through Third Street Flats and kind of the renovations and the transitions there and kind of got to see hands on a lot of that uh, as well. And so you were glad to live here in McMinnville. You thought this was a great place. Now, after leadership, the leadership class, I imagine that enhanced that a bit? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's an understatement for sure. Um, I don't know. I just walked away, just mind opened, and uh -huh. just that much more of a respect for the family that uh -huh. can, that McMinnville is. Because I, I truly believe it is a family. You know, we, you know, meeting Carrie and seeing some of the stories, you know, from the Cancer Foundation and watching someone go through hardship and the community just coming together and like we're going to make sure this person's taken care of, or you know, whether it's food or just the love you feel in the community is is amazing. And uh, I just I just had a whole nother picture of the people that make McMinnville so amazing um, through this class. You came up to me and, and talked about coming on the show to do this because you just graduated. And I, I, I just got this feeling, I get this feeling from you, you want to give the whole town a group hug. It's, <laughs> it's just that that kind of connection. Yeah. So bringing community together is the purpose of Leadership Mac and it has really seems to do that. Well, let's get into the uh, advertising portion of our program. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> to talk about, yes, you too can uh, be in Leadership Mac. So uh, registration? There's a, you can go to uh, the chamber office. Now you need to be a member of the chamber to begin with. No. No. No, you'll just pay a little bit more to join. Okay. So you don't have to be a member. Um, but there's a discount if you are. Okay, um, great. So any, anybody can do this. Anybody can do this. The first um, 35, 30 people that sign up can do this. It, it fills up very quickly. So, um, yeah, you just pick up an application, you fill it out, you turn it in the chamber, they'll review it, um, they'll get back to you, and then there's another process. They'll fill out some, they'll get some more information from you, um, and then it goes um, through the committee. Everybody kind of looks everything over, and it's going to fill up quickly. Yeah. Okay. And it, the registration is open now. Yes. Now, just to review the scenario, it starts in September. It's once a month for a, a full day. Yeah, it's a full day commitment. And I see this, the dates are around the middle of the month. And uh, every once a month for nine months. Correct. And then you had a graduation ceremony. We did. What was that like? It's uh, pretty awesome. We We vote on, you know, most likely to most likely to volunteer in the community you know they vote on you know who's most likely to be a politician the you know who was you know the class president essentially who was involved the most or um and there's just everybody's kind of likes this silent little vote that the last day and then uh -huh. they give out the plaques and and certificates at that time uh, we kind of meet up do a little uh do a dinner as a group and and uh just kind of say it has been great these last nine months it feels like kind of a high school graduation. I mean, when you're picking this most likely to succeed and, <laughs> right, right. and a class couple. Um, but you have that feeling. Yeah. You have that, that relationship with each other and you want it to continue on. And it does continue on, I understand. Can you tell us a little bit about the committee that, uh, that sustains this? Well, I'm newest to the committee, uh, but it's, there's a, gr a group of about 15 people. And we take every single day after the event, there's a, a response form. And we want po they, they wanted positive and negative feedback. And then we look at every single one of those and make adjustments. Like, how can we make the class that much better? And, uh, and then they kind of, we put our heads together and come up with a plan, an action plan to put that in motion for the next class. Right now it's just promoting. We want to promote, get the word out to all the businesses and all the community members um, to let them know that we're accepting applications and you're going to miss out because it's going to fill up quickly. Well, you're a great ambassador and thank you for approaching me and, and letting me know how great this program is and being on this show. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, another, I found, fascinating show. I hope you did too. Thank you, Ray, and thank you, Leadership Mac, and I hope to be one of the class graduates someday, and I hope to be in the class with you. So come back next week for another great show.